What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got more Fall of the House of X. This time with issue four of Rise of the Powers of X. And folks, this issue is so dope. Because we know these guys want to resurrect the Phoenix, so... Yeah. <laughs> this issue is crazy. <laughs> Hell, this whole series is crazy. Especially that crazy Professor Xavier surprise ending last issue. And if you don't know which ending I'm talking about and you need to get caught up with this series, then I'll place a card at the top of the screen for you right now. And a link at the end of the video. But when the last issue ended, we got that crazy heel turn by Professor Xavier when he ended Rachel Summers. Right after her dead X-Men team and convinced Xavier not to end Young Moira so they could keep their Krakoan history. So if you guys are ready to find out what happens when these guys try to bring back the Phoenix, and if there's any type of retaliation towards Xavier for what he did to Rachel Summers, then you guys know what time it is. Let's get it. So we picked this issue up at No Place X, right after Xavier did what he did to Rachel Summers. And now Rasputin 4 has just realized what Xavier has done. And she screams at him, calling him a traitor. And he tries apologizing for it, but Rasputin 4 is in destroy mode now. And she swings her sword at Xavier, prompting him to look to Mother Righteous for help. She has the power to stop Rasputin, and she offers to do it if Xavier lets her free. So that's exactly what Xavier does. He lets Mother Righteous out, and she immediately puts a spell on Rasputin 4, freezing her in place. Then Xavier tells Rasputin that he's turning off her pain receptors. Her gifts make her quite durable. And this will take some time. And then he straight up pops Rasputin. Later, out. Seems like Xavier's gone full on dark side. But then he notices Mother Righteous smirking. And he asks her what she's laughing at. Because finding this predicament amusing would lower his already super low opinion of her. So she tells him that she's had time to think while she was trapped inside of that cage. And she worked out how she could dissolve the version of herself in the white hot room and she just made her go bye bye so they're no longer holding a gun to her head in there then Xavier tells her that he's sure she's planning on betraying him but he reminds her that she burned up all her power in her dominion hood attempt so there's not much that she could do and she jokes that she's resourceful and she'll find a way to be useful but Xavier replies that she already is and then he activates no place X and pulls it into the main current reality and it lands burning right on the beach of Pacific Krakoa. And then he screams out for Orcus to come. There's a standing order to bring in Stasis' wife, and he has her, he screams. Then later, as he sits shackled by Orcus, Omega Sentinel Karima Shapander walks in to interrogate him and tells him that Stasis is dead, so this falls to her. She almost didn't come, but she was curious. Then we get the expanded scene of what we got back in issue four of the fall of the house of x with professor x making that deal with orcus and when karima approaches him xavier tells her that he knows their ais are moving against their human masters if he weren't their human allies the humans might actually be able to do something to stop them so of course she asks him what it is that he suggests and he tells her that they are about to crush the mutants before concentrating on the humans but spare them all they need is an island Give it fences. Let the mutants live. And to hell with humanity. After all, it's the one thing they haven't tried. Just ask Moira. AI and mutants versus humans. The two futures versus the past. And when she asks him what he can do for them in exchange for this understanding, he tells her that no one sees the world like him. He's the ultimate sentinel. Meanwhile, back in the white hot room, Rachel Summers is being resurrected. And when she awakens, she tells the mutants there that Xavier killed her and he's about to do something terrible. But Destiny already knows, she tells Rachel. Then later on, as she sits alone, she's approached by Hope Summers and Exodus. And Hope apologizes to Rachel for not telling her. And none of them like this, but you know why we couldn't, Hope tells her. But right now, everyone needs you. You kickstart the Phoenix, it kicks Enigma's ass. You get back to Earth, and kick whatever Orcus ass you can find. Well, Rachel just wishes that Xavier didn't lie to her, but 
she realizes that is Xavier. Then she asks what it is that Xavier is even going to be doing with Orcus. And she's told that, in truth, nothing that is not drenched in sin. Then we go back to Xavier as Omega has him hooked up to a machine. And she tells him that they need him to weed out any rebellion amongst the human Orcus scientists. So he takes a second. Then the machine shows them the scientists that are most likely to rebel. And then Nimrod straight up annihilates those scientists. What's next? Xavier then asks Omega. And she tells him that that was an easy one. Even his X-Men are killing Orcus right now. Now Omega's thinking that the human world leaders are being surprisingly organized. Do something about that, which he easily handles. Meanwhile, remember Moira had previously given Enigma permission to access her lives and she's with Enigma now and she tells him that they've got Xavier now and he's selling out humanity for the mutants. But Enigma doesn't believe it. Xavier knows about him, he tells Moira. So Xavier's gotta be up to something. And Moira offers to speak with Xavier, but Enigma tells her to stay away. Then he tells her that they win. He's been to the future and seen it. But that does make him think of all the things that he can't see. But back in the White Hot Room, Rachel and her dead X-Men team have begun the ritual to bring back Jean Grey and the Phoenix. Meanwhile, Hope addresses all of the mutants and tells them that back on Earth, Kokoa is being hunted down. Its core left the island and went on the run. And now Apocalypse is carrying it home, and that's where they were engaged. Everyone with X training, or any combat training, has been resurrected and is ready to get back into the fray. Their fight for the world starts with Krakoa. But Rasputin speaks up because she knows that the Mother Righteous puppet is gone now, so how are you guys speaking to Earth? And how can we leave, she asks Hope. And that's when she's met with a familiar voice that tells her that he can't get everyone home. But he can get the strike force. He thinks that they can bud flowers across reality. Since he does still have Doug's X gene. As Rasputin realizes in horror that it's sinister. And as expected, she instantly loses it again. And as she goes in to kill him once more, he pleads that he can get them home. They can go be heroes and then draw straws to see who gets to hunt him down and kill him. So she holds back. Then back on Earth. Kokoa to be exact. Apocalypse is on the run from the Sentinels and he's carrying the island's core. And as he makes it into the forest of the island, buds begin to sprout. And then out come Rachel and the rest of the mutants that have traveled back from the White Hot Room. But back with Charles Xavier and Orcus, Omega Sentinel asks Xavier if he wants to know how many people it is that he's complicit in killing. He tells her no though, because one is too many. But then he asks her what's next, and she tells him that humanity must be crushed. And his X-Men are attempting to destroy their solar weaponry aboard Sentinel City. If they succeed, then the AI will need an alternative method of annihilation, and she asks Xavier if he can provide it. So he tells her that he has the nuclear codes. For once, the mutants must be on the winning side. Back on Kokoa though, the mutants that have emerged go right to work in taking out the Sentinels. They refuse to lose Krakoa again, says Exodus. And Rachel is proud of the work that Exodus is putting in, but in the big picture, winning this battle means nothing. They need to win the war, and that's what they can't do. She wishes that she could be there to set the fire, but it's the one thing that Enigma has no way of seeing coming. And then, at a maximum security orchid sale, Mother Righteous becomes petrified, and she begs for her life when she's approached by Enigma. And she tells him that she'll tell him everything. And she does, Enigma says, after he'd gone through so much trouble to take the Phoenix off the table. But now, with all the dimensions Moira has opened up to him, he thinks that he can crush the bird as it emerges from its egg. But, why take the risk? Then Enigma goes on to contact all the Dominions and request that they all gather together and crush the Phoenix. And as the ritual to resurrect the Phoenix has begun and Jean starts to get overwhelmed by the fire, the other Dominions return contact with Enigma. And they reply that if the Phoenix returns, we will all come. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the issue. So what did you guys think of the issue? We got the full effect of Xavier's meeting with Orcus. So how are you guys feeling about what he's doing here? 
And do you guys think that the Phoenix can handle all the Dominions? Man, y'all, talk about a team up. Sheesh. But only one more issue left of Rise of the Powers of X. So how do you guys think this will end? Hit me with those conspiracy theories. Y'all know I love them. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video and this channel, and you'd like to support the channel, then you could do so by stopping by the Comics Icon store and picking up some of this dope new merchandise, including the background music heard in this here video. Or you could do so by joining the Iconic Fan Club channel membership. And there'll be a link in the description to join. But with your membership, you'll gain access to weekly interactive live streams with yours truly, where we could talk about everything going down in these issues, as well as others that you'd like for me to go over in the future, and other comic book news too. Plus, you guys will get loyalty badges, member shout outs in these videos, and up to 20% off of Comics Icons merchandise from the store. And now we've got new tiers to the memberships as well, starting at just 99 cents. Or you guys could donate to the channel with a super thanks. And if you're not able to do any of that, then you can still be a huge help to the future of this channel by dropping a like, share, and subscribing to Comics Icons for more icons in the comic book world. But ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I'm out. Peace.